Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, today, I want to spotlight a director, one of my favorite directors um, over the years. And he's done a large body of work well into the 90s. And I want to spotlight a few of his best movies that I think are really good. Now, this isn't a comprehensive filmography of John Frankenheimer, but I've got some of his best movies, some of my favorite movies, let's put it that way. So, let's kick things off with a movie from 1964. It's called Seven Days in May, and this is a super cool movie. This is a Warner Archive release, by the way. Um, this came out in 64, and it's got a great cast. It's got Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, Fre Frederick March, Frederick March, uh, Ava Gardner. Uh, super, 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 super cool movie. Um, from 1964, what can I say? Uh, it's basically, uh, Frederick Mark March is the president. Um, and um, he gets the down low secretly from Kirk Douglas that Burt Lancaster is trying to do stage a political coup and take over the country, uh, basically assassinate the president, take over the country. He feels it's not being run some way. So he, he's basically got all these crazy thoughts in his head. You know, he's he's slightly deranged uh, of some sort. He plays it pretty calmly, uh, but yeah, he's obviously got, you know, something going on with him. But Kirk Douglas is kind of the, I guess, the hero of the movie. I mean, he he's a, um, he works for, uh, he's under, uh, Burt Lancaster's command. He's like one of his associates, um, and uh, he he gets wind of this somehow from a paper, or uh, he overhears a meeting, something. He starts doing some investigation. He finds this out. He gets a hold of the president, and they they stage kind of a this plan to you know upstage him from all this, which is a super cool movie. Had this for a while. And it set and set and set, and I hadn't watched it. And then I finally put it in and watched it, and man, was it good. Uh, Ava Gardner plays um, basically Burt Lancaster's um, girlfriend, I guess. She, she's kind of mistreated by Burt Lancaster and everything, and she, she's always had feelings for Kirk Douglas. They all kind of know each other, you know. So um, Kirk Douglas, Kirk Douglas, kind of manipulates Ava Gardner into giving him some stuff that he needed to bust Burt Lancaster on this whole deal. And she didn't know any of this was going on. But yeah, man, it's such a good movie. It's got a lot of political intrigue, a lot of plans, little operatives. Got a lot of great, great star, uh, co-stars. It's, it's great. It's a great movie. It's kind of under... I don't want to say it's underrated, but it's not exactly up there all the time. People don't always talk about it. So, Seven Days in May, I'll pick it up. I don't know if I did anything to influence you by that, but check it out. Next up, uh, The Manchurian Candidate. Uh, John Frankenheimer, I guess, burst onto the scene with this um, movie. Um, you know, it was remade a few years ago. Uh, uh, it's got Frank Sinatra, um, gosh, what is it, um, Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, uh, Janet Leigh, uh, Angela, Angela Lansbury, and a great run by Henry Silva, he was, he's always super cool in all the movies he's in, uh, but yeah, this was a big hit, I guess it was in 1962. Um, got him on the charts, started people paying attention to this guy, John Frankenheimer. Uh, it's basically dealing with, uh, what is it, China, North Korea, um, 
yeah, Korean, like this takes place during the Korean War. Uh, a platoon of American soldiers are kind of brainwashed by the Korean, North Korean uh, plot to take over America. Uh, Angela Lansbury's working with them. See, I don't want to give away too much because it's a great mystery, and if you've never seen it before, then it's gonna. I'm gonna blow. I'm gonna blow all the plot holes. I'm gonna give it all away. So, check this out. Check the original out first before you see the re the remake because um, it's definitely great. Um, another movie I've seen, and then I got this DVD years ago, and it's set, and I rewatched it recently, and it's super good. Now, next up is a movie that's really kind of odd. It's underrated. It's an odd movie that I knew the soundtrack because I, you know, I'm a fan of Johnny Cash. Um, it uses the title of uh, one of his songs, and basically Johnny Cash does the soundtrack. This is uh, 1970s I Walk the Line, and this stars uh, Gregory Peck, uh, Tuesday Weld, uh, Estelle Parsons, and uh, original music by Johnny Cash. He does a soundtrack run through it. Uh, Gregory Peck plays the sheriff of this small town, uh, I want to say Tennessee. Yeah, it's in Tennessee. And um, he's um, pretty boring, leads a boring life. He's, his wife is always trying to please him. He, he seems to be distant. Always, he's, he, he plays it very Gregory Peckish. He's very kind of stoic. Like he's always got something on his mind. He's kind of daydreaming. He leads such a boring life. And, um, he runs across this girl, Tuesday Weld, and her brother um, when they, uh, the little boy, her, her little, Tuesday Weld's little brother is driving this truck. He basically, he's like eight, and they're just having a rip roaring town time driving it. He gets off the road, wreck, um, wrecks, and uh, Gregory Peck you know, pulls him over and finds what's going on. Um, he's immediately captivated by Tuesday Weld. They, immediately have a a thing starts going on or at least he thinks there's something going on uh meanwhile the little brother runs off and um gregory peck gives um uh, tuesday well a, a ride home um and little little to his knowledge uh, her dad and brothers are running a moonshine operation and down the picture uh, the FBI is coming into town to work with the sheriff's department to locate some moonshine setups and steals and bust these people and everything. Um, and he finds out that, you know, they're, this girl, he, he starts having an affair with Tuesday Weld. He, he's well aware of his, her father's operation and just doesn't say anything about it. In fact, he, he tries to protect them. And, uh, but his uh, deputy is really trying to get some acclaim with this FBI guy. So he, he's really catching on, watching Gregory Peck like he's up to something. And it, it's a great movie. Um, I had heard of it for years ago because of the soundtrack and everything and didn't pay much attention. It's such an odd movie from 1970. And Gregory Peck, it doesn't seem like it would be a John Frankenheimer movie. It's very low-key but a great story. It looks like it's a very small budget, just a good little movie, and um, highly recommended. Um, DVD, I believe, is the only way you can see it. I don't think it's on Blu-ray yet, but yeah, highly recommend that. Uh, I Walk the Line. Um, a lot of good stuff in it. I can't even get into telling you to sell this movie to you, but just on my recommendation, check it out. Super good. Uh, next up, we go to 1977 with Black Sunday. Uh, this is a movie with Robert Shaw, Bruce Dern, uh, Martha Keller. Martha Keller. Um, basically, this is a plot by um, Martha Keller's working with this organization. I believe they're like a what kind of terrorist operation they are. There, there's some terrorist group. 
this is based on a true a true story with the Black September terrorist group that do, does this big thing at, at the uh, at a football game. Um, Bruce Dern is this twisted guy from Vietnam. He's just he's lost his wife. He's just nuts. He 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 turns in a great Bruce Dern performance. Um, he gets tied up with this organization and he works with this woman and she basically uses Bruce Dern and his use of he's a he's a blimp pilot um, he works he pilots a blimp and while they film football games how they used to do stuff and um, works with them basically uses them so they can get the blimp so they can just you know do their plan and everything so it's it's a great movie robert shaw who uh you know was in uh, jaws uh turns in a really good performance uh highly recommend this this is great um i'm not sure i don't believe it's on blu-ray so that's why i have a dvd copy of it but yeah this is a paramount widescreen collection release it's been out for a while next up is a kind of another odd movie that he did this was from 1982, and it's called The Challenge. And this is a movie starring Scott Glenn, uh, one of my favorite actors, Toshiro Mifune, from um, Japan, Japanese greatest Japanese actor, I believe. Famous for all his work with Akira Kurosawa. Uh, he basically, uh, Scott Glenn is a student of the ninja arts and stuff and he's you know he's he's uh very skilled in the use of a sword and um somehow or another he um he works with this uh, group um toshiro 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 mifuni's brother runs this organization and um basically he's going to be took out i'm trying to i'm trying to sum this up to where it makes sense but um it, it's basically a japanese family feud uh involving the ownership of an ancient sword that the brothers share that's been passed down for generations um so somehow or another they get scott glenn to assist uh foiling the rich industrial industrialist brother uh from you know taking this sword he's you know he's trying to kill his brother so he can have sole ownership of this because he believes it gives him power um but yeah it's a great little movie um i'm trying to think of some stuff here on here but yeah it's a great movie um and just thinking about this i have left out some cool John Frankenheimer movies, but I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, this is a great offbeat movie. Uh, Scott Glenn as a ninja. I mean, come on. It's a great movie, great offbeat movie. Highly recommend it. This is a Kino release, uh, Blu ray. Check that out. Um, there's a couple of movies I don't have on my list 1968's uh, Seconds. It's a great John Frankenheimer movie. Uh, it's got a uh, Brock Hudson in it. Uh, gosh, I can't believe I left it off the list. I believe I covered it in another episode. But um, and another one is the Holcraft Co Covenant uh, from 1985. That's got uh, Michael Caine in it, and that was from another episode, Michael Caine episode. So those are some other movies that I, I've, I've been thinking of that I should have included, but I didn't. But this next movie is probably my favorite john frankenheimer movie it's it may be my favorite burt lancaster movie and it's 1965's the train this movie i love this movie this is a super great movie i had it on vhs tape years years and years and years and years ago when i was a just a kid love this movie uh it's basically the French resistance against the Nazis. They're trying to use this train. Um, the French resistance does everything they can to sabotage it and get control of it. And uh, man, is it a good movie. It's got Burt Lancaster. It's got, uh, who's all in this? Oh, Jean Moreau is really good in this movie. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the French actor that's really good. Uh, Michael Simon 
It's really good in this. But yeah, this is a great, 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 great movie. This is the Arrow Academy release that I have, but I believe it's on it's been it's on different editions out there. But man, you gotta get this movie out of all of these. This movie's so so good. It's one of my favorites. So I just wanted to make sure I got that in this episode. And finally, guys, uh, John Frankenheimer uh, working well into the 90s. And here's another, like, like wow, John Frankenheimer directed it? Kind of, you know, you're kind of watching it. Because this was a big hit, I believe, or at least I thought it was a big hit when it came out in 1998, is uh, Ronin, which uh, stars... Uh, Robert De Niro and I don't want to miss his name up. Uh, John Reno and it's got a Jonathan Price in here too. But man, this is a great movie. It takes place in France. Uh, there's like this. What is it? Um, there's like a mercenary situation. Uh, Robert De Niro's in this mercenary group, and they're uh, trying to do this mission to steal top. A, a top secret briefcase that turns into all this other stuff. It's a simple task. Soon, a simple task soon proves explosive as other underworld organizations vie for the same prize. So it's a super great modern day action classic. And um, when I when I saw this back in the 1998, I was like, wow, John Frankenheimer. You know, because you thought he was well past his days of directing in Hollywood and. He pops up out of nowhere and makes this great, great movie. And um, I believe maybe he did a few more movies and that was it. Maybe two and that was it. But So I would say this is his last great movie. Uh, super cool movie. Uh, if you love action, mercenary uh, movies, James Bond, spy thriller type espionage movies, um, definitely a good movie for you there. And uh, so, yeah, there's some John Frankenheimer movies for you guys. Uh, he's definitely a great director. Um, I'm going to continue finding his movies because there's still more movies that I don't have. But um, those are some of his great movies. The Train, The Manchurian Candidate. Um, what was the other one? Like Black Sunday. I mean, he's he's done a lot of great movies. So... There you go, guys. Check him out, John Frankenheimer. Uh, check out his filmography. And um, there you go. So um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Check out my other episodes I have. I have a bunch of episodes. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and comment. Comment, comment. I would love to hear some comments from you guys. And uh, until next time, I guess, be safe out there. Continue to be safe for the new year, 2021. And uh, I will see you guys again in another episode. So be cool, guys.